Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Real Talk with Coach Sherry. And I want to talk about this book right here. It's called The Word for You Today. And I got this book from my father and um, I've been reading it. It's like, it's like um, The Daily Bread. Have you ever heard of The Daily Bread before? That was a really small book that um, many, especially women, I remember back in the day, my mother and all her friends had the daily bread and daily they, there was a scripture and, you know, words of encouragement, a passage, um, a short story, and it was really good. Um, so this book, The Word for You Today is very similar to that. And it's a book that my father had gotten for his church. Um, I believe he got it for his Sunday school. And he shared several copies with me to give to my husband and to my kids for us to read. And um, I've really been enjoying a lot of the stories that are in this book. Um, every time I speak to my dad, he referenced the book. And um, I know that he had said, you know, maybe try and add some of this to your, your YouTube channel and, you know, share some of the information from this book. And so, you know what, I decided today that I am going to do that because I know that this is a book that my father definitely holds near and dear. He mailed out, he said like 25 copies to family members last week. And so many people are being blessed by the word that they are receiving from this book. So in addition to regular videos that I'll do, I'm also going to do segments where I'm going to share the daily word from this book the word for you today. All right, so today being Monday, April 13th, the title is Everything You Need for Living. Everything You Need for, for Living. And it's coming from the second book of Peter, chapter one, verse three. Peter writes, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Living life to the fullest requires three things. One, a little extra. This is the extra mile principle Jesus taught. See Matthew chapter 5, verse 41. And it calls for two things. A, extra effort. Life coach and author Art Williams said, you beat 50% of the people by working hard. The other 40% by being a person of honesty and integrity and standing for something. The last 10% is a dogfight. If you want to win, make up your mind to always do a little extra. Be extra time. Though your vision linger, wait for it. It will certainly come to pass. And that's have chapter two, verse three. Gudson Borglum, the sculptor who created the Mount Rushmore Memorial to America's presidents, who asked if he considered his work to be perfect. He replied, not today. The nose of President Washington is an inch too long. It's better that way, though. It will erode and be exactly right in 10,000 years. <laughs> Number two, your best effort. Andrew Carnegie said, there's no use trying to help people who won't help themselves. You can't push anyone up a ladder unless he or she is first willing to climb it. Number three, the right mentor. Paul writes, pattern your lives after mine. Um, Philippians chapter three, verse 17. Good mentors lead by example. They know that to be followed, they must be respected. They know whether you learn visually or verbally. They know whether you need a pat on the back or a kick in the seat of your pants. If you have such a mentor, you're blessed. If not, ask God to send you one into your life today. All right. I hope that you receive something from that word today. And again, today is talking about everything you need for living. So one of the things that resonated with me, um, especially at the end, was about a mentor and how important it is to have a mentor. I know that a lot of us out here are mentors. I mean, everyone at some point needs to be a mentor. There's always someone that you need to be reaching back for and bringing them up. But I think a lot of times people get it confused when they're a mentor and 
they tend to always talk about what they've gone through, who they are, what obstacles they've accomplished and overcame and, you know, all the things that they've been able to gain in their life and what they do on a daily basis. But I think before you even become a serious mentor or before you start mentoring seriously a person, you really need to understand who they are, where they're coming from, what are their strengths, their weaknesses. And even in this passage, when they talked about, um, as a mentor, a mentor knows if a person learns verbally or visually. You know, how how the person that you're talking to, how do they learn? What how do they receive new information? Um, that's always important. You know, are they a direct person? Do they need the whole story? Are you losing them? When are you losing them? How are you losing them? Because that's really important. Just because if someone is sitting quietly and looking at you as you're speaking, that doesn't mean that they're really fully focused on what you're providing them. That doesn't mean that they are retaining the information. That doesn't mean that they understand. So you need to really understand how is it that they learn? How is it that they receive new information? Check for understanding. As a mentor, periodically during your sessions or your conversations, you need to ask, do you understand what I'm saying? What does that mean to you? When I say this or when I said that, how did you receive that? What does that mean to you? How did you interpret that? Let me know. You know, really focus on how they are receiving the information because if you're just talking to be talking and not receiving any feedback, that's not good. You don't know if they've actually retained the information, um, especially if it's someone that's really challenging, someone that is really flailing and are really needing your direction. Or it might be that their parent is put them upon you to please give my child some direction. When you are talking to that person, you know, ask them what what I'm what I'm saying. What does that mean to you? How 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 do you see yourself possibly doing this? Or you know, really communicate with them. Also, you know, when they do something well as a mentor, you need to acknowledge that. You know, if that is putting a, giving them a pat on the back, telling them how proud you are. Do you know how many people have not heard "I am proud of you"? It just really, it's amazing to me. You know, whenever my interns or my apprentices do something well, even after they've completed the program and I'm still keeping up with them and they tell me of an accomplishment, I always let them know, I am so proud of you. No matter how great or small it is that they've done, I let them know that because overcoming something or, you know, completing something, earning something, being promoted, moving even, you know, into a larger apartment, um, increasing your, your, yourself, your family, all of that is something to be proud of. And so many people take it for granted. And, you know, it's one of those, oh, I don't, I don't say, tell my child that they did well when they get AIDS because they're supposed to. Of course, you know, that's the expectation. You want everyone to do well. You want everyone to succeed. You want everyone to be able to live on their own, to um, be fully sufficient and everything. But in the meantime, it's really, it, it makes a person feel good to know that their works are being recognized and that the person that cares about them most recognizes it and tells them that. It's more than just going back to your friends and, and bragging to your friends about, ooh, my mentor did this or my child did that. You know, tell that person, them, tell that to them. So many people never really um, get to know how their parents have felt about them or how a loved one felt about them until they are gone. I've heard so many stories of people saying how, when their parents passed away and at the funeral, when the friends got up to speak and the friend said, wow, you know, your mother or your father loved you so much. They did nothing but talk about you. And I remember when you went to college, I remember when you did this, I remember when you got this job, I remember when you moved here or there, um, you know, and the, the, the person never heard that from their loved one. And these people are people they never even met or even heard of themselves. But it's like, wow, my loved one thought that much about everything I was doing and told people because they were so happy about it, so proud about it. But they never told me. I know one young lady who said that when her father passed, you know, she never knew how much everything she had been doing meant to him until his funeral when people went up and started talking about her. And she was like, wow, I don't even know these men. I don't even know these women. And they know so much about me because my dad always talked about me. 
So don't, don't allow the person in your life, the people in your life, the people you are mentoring, the, your children, people in your community to walk away from you not knowing how you feel about the things that they have done and are doing in their life. It's really important to communicate that to them. Um, you know, everything you need for living, this passage is really good. Everyone needs someone. Everyone needs that person in their corner. Everyone needs that, um, that success coach, <laughs> that mentor, that trainer, that, that, you know, advocate, that, um, accountability partner. Everyone needs someone like that in their life. So I hope that you have someone like that in your life. And if you do, please, in the comment section below, type in who is that person for you? Who is your mentor? Who is your trainer? Who's your accountability partner? Who is your success coach? Who's that person in your corner saying, yes, you can do it. Oh my goodness. I'm so proud of you. You know, um, when was the last time you heard that? Or have you not ever heard that before? I really hope that you have. And if you haven't, I'm here to say that I am very proud of you. I'm proud that you got up and you put one foot in front of the other. You know, if it wasn't for God, that's our first blessing every day when we open our eyes. So if it wasn't for God, that wouldn't happen. Um, always remember to put that one foot in front of the other. I spoke to a group of people today via a webinar and um <laughs> it was really interesting because this is a training program and it's an extensive training program it's about five or six weeks long and usually people that live in the housing authority participate in this program and it's for them to be um, gain more skills um, in the sustainability realm of things and um, the program tries to find them positions where they can, you know, get gainfully employed. And so oftentimes I go and speak to them about the apprenticeship program, the internship programs that I am um, affiliated with. And so this is my first time talking to them virtually. Typically I go to them as they're just about to complete, just about to graduate from their class. And these men and women, and they are of all ages, are so excited. They are hungry. They want to learn, they want to work hard. And um, one of the instructors said, you know, Sherry, can you tell them the importance of soft skills? And I was like, oh my goodness, soft skills is like A1 since day one for me. <laughs> That's a skill that um, doesn't come easy and it doesn't happen overnight. It's not something that once you learn it is one and done. It's something that you have to develop and even when you learn it, you have to continuously practice it on purpose until it becomes your habit. And, you know, I was telling them that that's something for me and my participants, I don't even let them roll out into their on the job training until they've gotten soft skill training, where I know that they know different strategies on how to do things differently, how to do things better, how to make better decisions, how to show up the way that they need to show up each and every day. And so um, I felt like I was kind of like mentoring them <laughs> with the questions that they asked me, you know, um, I, I just really speak from my heart. You know, I'm very passionate about what I do. I'm very passionate about other people succeeding. And I really appreciated them today because, you know, first of all, I told them you guys are showing up. I'm sure there's naysayers in your corner saying, I wouldn't be online going to that class. If I can't do it, you know, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be on that video. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. But these people, regardless, they are showing up. And so I'm very proud of them. Um, but one of them was like, I really love how real you're talking to us. And I thought about it and I said, I don't know any other way to do it. I'm not here to try to sugarcoat anything, but I do know that just about everything is possible if you put your mind to it. Put your mind to it, get skilled up and take action. You know, putting your mind to it and just sitting back is not, is not the same. That's not going to give you the results that you need, that you want, that you desire. No, you have to take action. When you know what to do, you have to do it. Sometimes it takes that extra push. It takes that mentor. It takes that coach. It takes that trainer. It takes that advocate 
to tell you like you can do it and to continuously tell you that. And when you reach those milestones, they're there to let you know, wow, I'm proud of you. I'm glad you did that. It's for those mentors, those coaches, those trainers to share with you how they've overcome certain obstacles. But it's not for them to just tell you all about their obstacles. It's to share with you so you know that you're not alone, that other people have come through similar situations and have come through it. That's the point. Um, so I'm excited for them. I know this is a trying time, but you know, as long as they stay positive, stay focused and have realistic goals, especially in the beginning, you know, it's not about getting to that high level or all, all of a sudden, you know, at first, sometimes you got to work your way up and be okay with that and know that it's all a process and it might be teaching you patience, you know, um, mentors can help you with that because mentors can tell you from whence they came and how they achieved and how they grew. And that's another part of mentoring is, you know, sharing your journey. One thing that I know, especially dealing with my mentors and trainers for my apprentices and interns, I want them to sit down and hear about their mentor's journey. I think that's so important. I know I have them listen to other people's journeys because I think from where a person started and where they're at is so remarkable um, on every level. I just love it. Um, I love evolution. So to see that growth, hear about that growth, hear their thought processes through it, you know, like what made them decide I want to go for that promotion? Um, what made them decide I think I want to go back to school and get that certification or that degree so that I can move up? Like what encouraged them to do that and what kept them encouraged to finish? Because a lot of people start, but not everyone finishes, you know? So you want to start and complete, not start and stop. So I always have people share their story of how they started, why they started, and how they completed, and how it had propelled them further. Because people that are just new to an industry or new to a career, um, they need to hear those stories. You know, um, people have such thoughts of grandeur for themselves. You know, they they think highly, like, oh, I'm supposed to be the boss. I'm supposed to be the the manager. I'm supposed to be the supervisor. No, you sometimes have to start where in the beginning. And a lot of those managers, supervisors, and and leaders in the organization or in the business, that's where they started, just where you are. So hear how they started, hear what their climb was about. You know, they weren't here for 20 years doing nothing, or they weren't here for 20 years during, doing the same thing. So what did it look like for them? That's really important. All right, everyone. So <laughs> I wanted to really, you know, get into to that um, today. And I'm definitely going to talk more about it um, not about this topic, but another one. Tomorrow's topic is um, bodily exercise profits. Start exercising, <laughs> which as you all know, I've started to do walking and I love that you guys walk and talk with me um, and walk with me through my neighborhood. You know, I found some amazing paths and some scary paths, <laughs> some that I'm definitely not going to go back on until after October, which is after snake season, but that's another story. Um, so I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I'm actually going to probably create another playlist just for this type of subject matter so that, you know, you can have a little smorgasbord of real talk with Coach Sherry. So everyone, if um, you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anyone that may need to hear this as well, be sure to share it. If you're not already part of the team, I would love to have you. So hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified of all of my videos once they are posted up. I appreciate you all for listening, for taking the time. And until we speak again, I really hope that you all stay safe. And this has been Real Talk with Coach Sherry.